Hey everybody, welcome to Wood Chat for July 11th, 2012. I'm Matt Grabwall from Uppercut Woodworks. Uh, and you can I'm find Chris me on Paul. Twitter at uh, Uppercut Wood, and you can find me on the web at uh, UppercutWoodworks.com. Um, with me tonight is Chris Wong. Say hey, Chris. Hi, hi, I'm Chris, and um, you'll find me on Twitter at Flair Woodworks. My website FlairWoodworks.com, and we're joined tonight by Andy Brownell. Uh, representing Gorilla Glue. Andy? Sorry I'm late, guys. That's all right. I understand iPads, iPads are a real technical thing. It doesn't allow you to, to join a Hangout or certain Hangouts, I guess, but the, the iPad can start a Hangout. It just isn't, sometimes different Hangouts aren't supported by the iPad. It's odd. Sometimes different. Cool. Well, um, just some notes on uh, WoodChat in general. So um, we're now able to post the Twitter chat transcript right into the YouTube feed. Um, so I'll, I'll be doing that tonight. I did it last week. Uh, or actually not last week because we skipped last week, but the week before. Um, so you can watch the YouTube video and see the chat transcript synchronized with the, the video or kind of, sync, uh, kind of synchronized with the video. Um, also, next week, WoodChat will be one hour later. Um, we'll be starting at 7 Pacific and 10 Eastern, not 6 Pacific, because uh, Mark Spagnolo, the Wood Whisperer, will be joining us. Um, and um, in the future, we'll have Matt Vanderlis join us. Um, we have to work out the date, and then we'll also have uh, Shannon Rogers, the Renaissance Woodworker, join us. Um, so, Chris, you have an update on your table. You want to share that real quick? Sure. Um, I think most of you know that I have been building a large ma maple trestle table and it's been a slow, a slow process. Um, I think it's been about two months, maybe almost going on three months since I started it. And I'm just going to find a picture of it for you here. Um, so I finally got finished on it last week. And I'm dropping a, a link into onto Twitter there. I should probably put a hashtag with it there. Good chat. And I'll try to work put a screen share for you here. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll do a screen share later. I have to figure that okay. out. Okay, so tonight um, Andy's joining us um, as a representative from Gorilla Glue again. Um, but before we do that, I, I want to show people a little bit of a, a glue problem I had, a glue failure I had. Um, and Vic, I know Vic is in the chat room, and this is going to, um, well, it might not break his heart, but it's going to suck because um, <laughs> this is a uh, table that I built um, quite a while ago um, called Hayden's Table, and I had glue failure recently when moving stuff around in in the garage, and I really like it. I built the table very quick, but I'll show you guys really quick what's going on here. Um, get the screen share to work. There's my table there, Matt. Oh, cool. Looks like my screen share is not working because it's on a different monitor. And I, I, I got it. I can see it. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Oh, oh you could see it? Really? Okay. Um, well, then that means it's getting in the video feed. So if you look really close, you can see that um, this is one end of the table here where my mouse is, mm -hmm. and you got two uh, aprons coming in to these legs here. Um, now, there was a mechanical problem here. The, the mortises are too short, and uh, they didn't fit right, and so it was a glue-starved joint. This wasn't Gorilla Glue, because um, uh, I wasn't using Gorilla Glue at the time. You can see, though, that the wood did fail. If you look here, and you look here, you can yeah. see that the wood in the joint failed as well. Um, and then a close-up shot, you can see that the, the wood around the mortise failed. Um, it's really dusty. It's, I guess it's dusty in my shop. <laughs> you can see how short these um, stubby little tenons are. Um, so it's repairable, um, but it kind of stinks because it was a table I, I really enjoyed. So Why were they so short? Because I'm a moron. Um, no, 
Um, honestly, what I should have done <laughs> was uh, move the tenons uh, closer to the face of the apron. Instead, I, I centered them to make them easy easy to cut. Mm -hmm. and the reason I did that was because I didn't want the tenons um, to collide inside the leg. Um, and so I really could have I really could have done a better job there in designing the size of my tenons and the placement of my tenons and the place placement and depth of my mortises. So uh, lesson learned. It was a small table. I wanted to do it very quickly. I wanted to try out um, book matching on the top and um, and I wanted to try out um, an interesting detail on the leg. And uh, I I keep this table in my office at work. It's got a plant on it, but. I had moved it home, and when we moved it around the garage, it just failed. So, um, oh. but that'll be fixed. That'll be fixable. So, so there's that. So, Andy, why don't you um, you want to talk about uh, maybe the prizes? Yes. Uh, if if you have a chance to pull it up on screen share while I'm talking, since I'm sure. technically challenged tonight in many ways. Um, okay. This was all set up in my in my workshop where I was going to have the chat from, but um, we basically have uh, three prizes uh, to give away. They're prize packs that include a uh, bottle of the 18-ounce wood glue. Um, there's a bottle of the polyurethane glue, uh, the PVA, or the um, uh, super glue, um, a package of the epoxy, uh, a roll of tape, and uh, a t-shirt, which is the one I'm wearing right now. You won't get this shirt, because it'll probably smell by the end of the night, but <laughs> one that looks just like it. And uh, basically, uh, I have uh, on, my, on my site uh, a little bit more on the uh, details, but basically what you can do is there's three different categories, and you can submit ideas around either new products, um, I'm uh, blanking on the other topics there. Hold on. So uh, new product ideas. Yeah. So thick adhesives or anything else tough that Gorilla could put its name on. The best tough story around glue up or frankly putting anything, any two things together that otherwise would never be connected. Right. And, and then, the blank. If I were as tough as a Gorilla, I would. Um, and the first guy uh, that made a comment was me. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, did, I hope the screen share made it. It's not working on my screen. Did it make it? Uh, I did not see it. But if anyone wants to uh, wants a little bit more information, they can just go to brownellfurniture.com, and uh, you can see it. There, there it is. is. There it is. So there's the picture of the uh, of the prize pack, right there. And does it come in that bright orange tough box there? It does. It comes in a big, bright orange tough box that will uh, will be shipped to you. And there's three prize packs, right? Yep, three prize packs tonight. Very cool. So you can submit them at any point over tonight, or if people are missing the chat and want to catch up on it, they've got a couple of days that they can submit the ideas, and then we will uh, we will kind of take a look at the best ideas, and we'll give one away for each of the categories. Cool. Cool. Thank you. All right. Hello, guys at Gorilla Glue. Thanks for um, getting that for us. So. No problem. Um, did you have any? Uh, did you have any good suggestions last time, or from the from the from the chat? Um, we did. We had. Uh, you know, a lot of people were talking about hide glue. Um, that's a pretty popular one, as you would expect from woodworkers. Um, a, a tougher hide glue. Uh, I. Don't know how you could go about that when it's going to be reversible at the end of the day, but uh, that was a popular one. Um, another one was uh, super glues or uh, of of different uh, viscosities, you know, like gels. Uh, we know Type Bond has got uh, some different thickness um, super glues, and uh, you know we definitely see uh, a lot of people um, asking for that as well. Um, people ask for tapes and different thicknesses as well if we go outside of the standard adhesives category. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of a couple of good ideas um, from the last time. Good. That's cool. Have you guys ever had a glue failure? 
Have I joint failure? I've been okay. Um, I've experienced some in other people's works, but not not my own. I've been okay. Have you guys ever done repairing with high glue? And isn't it that you just heat it up? Yeah. Um, it can also kind of reverse a little bit in, with with moisture as well. Is that correct? Yeah, moisture and heat. Yes. So steam steam will soften the glue. Yeah, I haven't had much uh, experience using high glue outside of just some, you know, some tests that, that I've done uh, for Gorilla Glue, just doing some comparative tests mm -hmm. uh, on strength and, and glue creep. We talked about that last week, uh, just kind of looking at what factors influence um, glue line telegraphing. So sometimes you'll get a fine raised glue line along uh, like a tabletop or a panel glue up that uh, that kind of causes a bump. Some people have never heard of it, and some people clearly recall having that problem. So I know Chris was like, I don't even know what you're talking about. No idea. No idea at all. <laughs> what about um, glue for laminations? Was there, a, was there a call for glue for laminations? A lot of people use that mixed up. Um, well, there's the tight bond glue for laminations, but then there's the urea glue. Not a high, which can be yeah. nasty stuff. Mm -hmm. Hard to find as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, the only other the only other glues that I've heard people are using for for laminations are either um, like a two part epoxy, um, like West System, or what is it T thirty three? Yeah. System three rather. Um, and then the other popular one that um, Gorilla Glue we hear a lot about are, are people using polyurethane for outdoor applications. A lot of people will use that for bent laminations that are going to be put outdoors. Mm -hmm. So if they're laminating up lots of strips of uh, cedar or, or pine or something else, you know, basic, you know, materials that you can get from a, um, a big box store, they'll use that because they know it's going to get exposed to the elements and polyurethane glue is 100% waterproof. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's the question that somebody asked on a forum just uh, today. Mm -hmm. and the question, question is this. Um, how does one remove Gorilla Glue? My daughter is trying to repair a chair that someone has repaired with Gorilla Glue, and nothing seems to remove the old glue so that it can be re-glued. Um, if she's talking about the polyurethane glue, um, you know, if it's completely dry, um, if it's big chunks, it's usually pretty easy to to remove compared to um, uh, compared to like a regular PVA wood glue. Um, okay. The best way to kind of go about it is either scraping it with either like a you know a cabinet scraper or a knife or sanding away the extra residue, um, and then you can reapply glue to the surface. Okay. So okay, just to remove it. There's no no solvent or anything. No, once it's once it's dried, you're not going to be able to have any solvent that that really removes it. Okay. The best the best thing to do, I mean, we we always recommend when you're using it to wear gloves, unless you're really sure you're not going to get it on your hands. Okay. Um, and if it does get on excess areas, you're you're better off just using either a dry cloth to wipe it off, or wait until it's completely dried, and then it's much easier to just kind of scrape off and remove the excess at that point. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was thinking along the same lines as Mike uh, Leahy Coinen. I think I got that right. Um, he's thinking about acetone for removing uh, Gorilla Glue. Will that will that soften it? Um, you know what? I I'm gonna have to double check some information on that one before I provide an answer. Okay, uh, Fritz uh, Rare Repair on Twitter is saying that there is a solvent that will work. Um, Fritz, if you know what solvent it is, I'd I'd be interested to hear that. It might be methyl ethyl ketone. Say um, that again. It, was fast. it might be uh, methyl ethyl ketone or MEK, um, okay. which is used um, if you spray latex paint through a HVLP gun and it gets stuck in there. You want to use methyl methyl ethyl ketone. I think it also works. It may also work on polyurethane finishes, which means it may work on um, polyurethane glues. But I, I wouldn't recommend anybody go out 
to go out and just try it without doing some research because, um, like a lot of solvents, I'm sure it's nasty stuff. Um, either dry cloth or paint, uh, paint thinner is actually um, the best for, for removing it. And I think pretty much everyone has paint thinner. Uh, I don't know what impact that's going to have necessarily on the wood. Um, that's for removing the wet glue, though, right? Or yeah. is that dry glue? No, that's, that's wet. Okay. That's wet Gorilla Glue, yeah. Okay. Either paint thinner or just a, like a paper towel. Okay. Um, removing dry glue, I, I don't think we've ever spent any time trying to use any kind of industrial solvents to remove dry okay. polyurethane glue. You're, you're better off at that point. If, if the solvent is going to be that strong, you're better off just to using a chisel or a scraper or sandpaper. Yeah. Okay. I don't know of a solvent that works well on PVA glue either. Um, acetone softens it to the point where if you dosed, if you got, it, if you had it wet enough for long enough, you can peel it back. It gets rubbery. Okay. Okay. Never tried that before. I don't know if you could disassemble a joint with it though, if you soaked it in a bath of acetone. Yeah, and what what effect it would have if you were to soak a joint on it that was already finished? What would yeah. that be the finish? Or it might even change the uh, tone of the wood if it was unfinished wood. So, yeah, I'm not not sure about that. At the end of the day, anything that's sticky or an adhesive, you want to be careful and you know follow the instructions as best you can. We all are very faulty at never reading instructions entirely or following them to begin with. Uh, but certainly, if, if you know you're dealing with Gorilla Glue. I usually make a point of wearing gloves if I'm going to be using any significant amount of it because it, it's very difficult to get off your hands. It usually just takes a while to just kind of fall, come off as part of like the natural exfoliation process. Um, PVA glue, that's another story. You can just wash that off with soap mm -hmm. and yeah. water. What about spray adhesives? So you get a lot of uh, 3M or Loctite Spray adhesives. Uh, is Gorilla Goo thinking about spray adhesives? Um, not that I know of, and not that I was that I was told. Um, you know, the the, the biggest um, the biggest thing that typically will drive um, product innovation choices that Gorilla Glue would make, maybe versus some smaller uh, companies, is that Gorilla Glue is a, is a, is a brand that is intended to have general market penetration, so availability pretty much anywhere. You guys have probably seen it at your grocery store, hardware store, big box stores, you know, pretty much everything. Um, when, you're, when you're getting into smaller niche products like a spray adhesive perhaps or, um, you know, some of the more specialty glues and type and, and even like larger sizes, it's it's harder to justify manufacturing and distribution of products like that when we're designed to basically have distribution across larger markets, larger channels, rather than small niche categories. Okay. That's interesting because the first product I became familiar with from Gorilla Glue, I considered kind of a niche product with the polyurethane glue. Yeah, there weren't, uh, I don't know if there were many other polyurethane glue competitors out there. Mm -hmm. So they're more, are they more likely to do a, um, a general purpose like home glue, like a school glue, than they would be to do a custom glue for veneering? Uh, prob that's probably a good assumption. Um, I, I, I certainly don't want to answer all the product innovation and, you know, yeah. opportunities that they may be exploring. Um, you know, the, the Gorilla Glue product is is really um, designed to pretty much glue anything together. You know, I mean, I've, I just used it for, um, for my Rubo bench in a couple of different areas. You know, I use the PVA glue for, um, for all the basic lamination work, but, you know, the leather, the leather pieces that go on the Gramercy Holdfasts, um, so gluing leather, uh, to steel, yeah, um, or weather to metal. Um, I found that polyurethane glue works really well and holds holds pretty well in that. I know Jamil recommends kind of like a 
spray contact adhesive sometimes. Um, but I just figured the, the polyurethane glue worked out really, really well. I used, uh, I did the same thing. I used the, the clear or white Gorilla Glue to glue the, the leather to my grammar seal hold fast, and it, and it worked really well. Um, there's a question in the chat room. Can any of these glues be thinned to increase setup time? Um, the polyurethane glue, uh, I, I do not believe that can be thinned. The PVA glue, the, the Gorilla Wood glue, um, yes, that can be thinned with a little bit of water. Um, you don't want to thin it out too much, otherwise you're going to pretty much reduce any of the, the gluing properties, but you will get a little bit longer set time from that. Um, there's some videos on the Gorilla Glue uh, video channel as well, um, mm -hmm. as well as my site that I can send a link to um, if people are interested in that. I can post that. Cool. That, no, I think that'd be great to get that in the um, to get that in the uh, in the chat room, so that's in the chat transcript. Um, so you recommend gloves with the um, polyurethane glue. Is that a do, do woodworkers have to worry about um, a respirator or a mask with that? Um, you know, I, 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 I'm not aware of any kind of VOCs that kind of come off of the product. Um, you know, I, I don't really notice that with a polyurethane glue, the super glue. Uh, certainly, if you're going to spend a lot of time breathing in those fumes, mm -hmm. you probably want to be a little careful. Um, but, you know, that would probably be more long-term intense exposure versus, you know, a little bit here and there. You know, I live in Cincinnati. I'd probably run a greater risk of just breathing the air here versus a few fumes from CA glue. Um, another question from the chat room was, um, is Gorilla Glue, the polyurethane, affected by freeze-thaw cycles? From John Mendoza. Um, yes. Um, typically, uh, it has a little bit lower uh, temperature uh, threshold um, versus uh, uh, PVA glue. Um, but you probably can go through two to three freeze-thaw cycles with the polyurethane glue before you're going to really run into some problems. Let me just verify that as well, just to, uh, just to, be, just to be clear. And then the other question uh, by, from Mark Cherry, um, does Gorilla Glue have creep? Um, the Gorilla Polyurethane Glue, is that what he's referring to? Um, maybe, Mark, you can clarify that. In general, just so that you know, we can we can be clear. Let me uh, post the um, the gorilla. Most PVA glues do have creep. Most, if not all. Um, so I would assume he, the question is about polyurethane. Yeah. Um, again, so the, so creep. We're we're in the process of doing some some fairly in depth studies on on that topic. I've posted a few things to the blog so far. Um, Creep is, it seems like it's going to be influenced by a couple of things. The first is relating to um, wood movement. Um, and then the second is relating to uh, temperature and humidity changes. And both of those are a direct relation to the fact that uh, PVA glue is a water-based product. So obviously, if you're kind of reintroducing water to a, or humidity and temperature changes to that kind of a product, it's going to tend to create some movement and, and cause creep to some degree or another. Um, for the polyurethane glue, because it's waterproof, um, I have not seen any, uh, any indication that, um, that there is any kind of uh, creep apparent from the polyurethane product. Okay. Isn't that a function of the rigidity of the glue surface, not, not anything else? What do you mean, the rigidity of the glue surface? Isn't it the rigidity of the of the bond that causes creep? Being if it's elastic, it'll have creep. If it's not elastic, if it's um, are you guys following me here? Well, the elasticity is the so you're saying maybe the elasticity is is related to 
the the movement in the wood, perhaps? Uh, just the creep of the glue line. Are you familiar with spring back on, on a lamination? Uh, yeah. And epoxies, certain glues are more rigid. They don't have as much spring back as others. Uh, hide glue is one of the very rigid ones. PVA is on the softer side. Yeah. Where does Gorilla Glue polyurethane fit in there? Um, as far as spring back, I don't know if I have an answer for that. I can't give you an answer. I can um, make a note and, and kind of respond to the group afterwards. Okay. You know, I, I honestly haven't seen a lot of glue creep. Um, I actually didn't wasn't even aware it existed until I um, did a search for it. Okay. And uh, I was surprised at how many people were out there discussing glue line creep. Um, but I've never, I, I, you know, my thing is uh, maybe people just need to clamp better or use wood that's um, acclimated more. Um, uh, but I've never had never had problems with glue line creep. And either is uh, either is Rob Boas. I have had creep. Um, what creep? Ah, <laughs> that's a tough one to describe. Okay, um, hang on. Let me get some uh, visuals. Chris is getting props now. Hey Andy. Mm -hmm. While Chris is getting his visuals, when is the um, one of the prizes going to be uh, awarded? Is it a week long contest? Is it a month long contest? Um, we'll we'll keep it up through the end of the week, and we can award it at the end of the week. Cool. Hey, because I have some stuff in the in my workshop, guys. Mm -hmm. Um, that I wanted to just show because people are people may be asking about a few other products. I wanted to bring those up real quick, okay? So yeah, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna sure. step aside for a second. I'll buy you some time. Okay, so this is a project that I was working on. I had to um, laminate some curved pieces of plywood here. I've got three layers of eighth-inch plywood glued together here, and I glued them over this form here, and I glued them on one at a time. And for this project, I just used PVA glue. This is my first time. And you can see that when I clamp this one here, when I released it from the clamps, it sprung back a little and didn't hold it. It didn't maintain the shape around the form. So it's got an opening here and a bit of an opening over here as well. So what I found was that The last one that I did, I left it in the clamps longer. And the longer I left it in the clamps, the more rigid, the more set the glue was. So it, it sprung back less, and it seemed to minimize the creep. But are you talking about spring back or creep? I'm talking about spring back mostly, but I think it's also a function of the hard hardness of the glue. Um, Trying to find the one that has the least spring back. Would you agree that spring back and creep are related, or are they totally different? Am I out to lunch? I think that I think that spring back and creep uh, might be related to the hardness or the rigidity of, of the glue when it's cured, but they're but to me they're two different issues. Yeah. The creep, the creep that I've heard people talk about is, um, I'm in my office, so I don't really have props, but they've, they've edge-jointed two boards, if these are two boards, and the glue line eventually will raise itself up above the two. So okay. Even though, even though they believe the joint is flush when they're done and the glue is cured, they come back a week or two later and the glue <clears throat> has raised up out of the joint. 
and so they get a ridge. So that's one symptom I saw when I did a when I did a um, a search. The other one is that they believe the joint is tight, and okay. then uh, they come back a week later and there's a, a bigger line than they than than was there a week ago because. Well, Alan, Andy, why don't you talk about it a little bit? Because you guys sure. do research on it. Um, yeah, I think I think the spring back thing is 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 a different issue versus glue creep. I mean, it, there may be similar properties at work, but kind of the 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 outcome is a little different. I mean, the for for glue creep, yeah, what we're, we've what we've seen is is exactly as you described. There's like a little ridge that appears along the glue line. What's so funny? <laughs> um, Vic and um, Rob Boas are disagreeing and agreeing and confusing me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, I, I will I will continue to uh, I will continue to to, to uh, talk about at least the context of what Rob is saying. Creep is when the glue line raises proud of the joint. Um, I said it first. <laughs> well, who said it first? I did. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, basically, what what we've seen is that the polyurethane or the PVA glues are much more likely to have that occur versus um, uh, a polyurethane glue. So PVA water-based glues seem to have that happen more. We've looked at that across um, all of all of the major brands, Type Bond, uh, Elmer's, um, and ours. Um, but it's less contingent upon the species of wood. Um, we see, it seems like temperature and humidity changes kind of exacerbate the process and make it happen a lot faster. Um, and then. Um, Grain direction also seems to have, or grain orientation also seems to have some impact on it. So, because there's going to be differences when you've got, you know, grain direction both this way versus a combination of quarter sawn and flat sawn versus two quarter sawn joints going together, you're going to have different kind of ratios of, of, of wood movement, you know, in one piece versus the other. And that may also. Um, create a little bit more of that glue creep to happen. Um, the one thing that we've seen so far consistently in at least environmental tests, and I've certainly seen this on things that I've built, is that polyurethane glue doesn't seem to be susceptible to that kind of, that kind of issue across the board, whether we put it in an environmental chamber or, and, and kind of accelerate the process of temperature and humidity or just do it um, within uh, just a regular controlled environment in a house through normal seasonal changes. Cool. Sorry, I was reading the Google Plus stream because there's some uh, questions there. So <clears throat> let's get those asked and I'll actually copy them into the Twitter feed. Okay. Uh, I think the answer to the next one is no, um, but the question is from um, Al Navas and it's um, Let's see, it's, we'll, I'll put him in here. Um, for, for bed laminations, he uses, or not for laminations, for veneering, he uses a lot of Unibon 800. Mm -hmm. He's wondering if there is something similar from uh, Gorilla Glue. For laminations? Um, well, I mean, the. So similar to Unibon 800. Uh, we don't. I mean, between, I mean, we've got, we've got, you know, three or four core adhesive products. We've got our polyurethane glue. Um, that has typically the longest set time, maybe about 30 minutes. Um, we've got our PVA, which is about 20 minute uh, set time, uh, five minute open working time. Um, then we have our CA glue, our super glue product, and then our two part epoxy, which is like a five minute epoxy. So we don't have anything that is probably a longer open time, like the Unibon stuff that he's talking about. Is that what he's? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, the, the Unibon is, um, I believe that's a that's a it's a glue you have to mix yourself. I believe it's a urea glue. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna I'll look it up right now. Um, there was uh, Chris. You want to talk about the John Mendoza suggestion? Yeah, he was suggesting that uh, Gorilla makes a cushioned tape for handles. 
to handle that, which I think would be a good idea. I like that. Um, I, I I would strongly suggest him submitting that into the uh, into the contest. Okay. That's that's available on my on the uh, on the website on on uh, brownellfurniture.com. I've got the post for that. Um, yeah, I here. And uh, you know that that's actually come up a, a bunch of times. You know the the really um, tough attributes associated with, or I guess what what handlebars and grips will go through. The stuff kind of peels off over time. Um, I've heard that a few times, and I'm pretty sure the the team back at the office has heard that as well. That's a great idea. Okay. We uh, do. He was, also, he was also wondering about construction adhesives. Oh yeah. That comes up kind of like the liquid nails. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's certainly certainly on the on the radar. Um, not necessarily something that again is is a larger general market product. Mm -hmm. um, it's more you know construction adhesives, more category specific. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think personally, I think that would be a great fit for the brand. I think he was joking when he said post-it notes, but <laughs> post-it notes. <laughs> post-it notes that are more sticky than the regular ones. Yeah, they're pretty pathetic lately. They they they're constantly falling off of our walls at work. Mm. So, um, is there a way to buy the Gorilla Epoxy in bulk, in bulk containers, not just a whole bunch of the syringes, but? <laughs> uh, yeah. No, no. The bulk the bulk question does come up quite a bit. Um, the again um, from a distribution standpoint, the, the shipping costs versus the, the price point becomes challenging. It's the same with like the really large bottles of, of uh, wood glue. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, certainly, you know, I think if someone really wanted to spend a lot of money and get a 50 gallon container of glue, I'm sure something could be arranged. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, most most of the products, you know, the the largest bottle is the um, you know the the wood glue right now is the 18 ounce. We've got a slightly larger um, 32 ounce polyurethane. Um, we actually have a smaller. I know this is probably not going to appeal to every woodworker, but more in the general market, there is a smaller mark, a smaller four ounce bottle of the wood glue that we've got coming out. That's actually uh, starting to go on the market right now. And then there's also, um, we've got these packages of, um, let me see if I can hold these up a little bit closer, these single-use um, CA glues, the super glues. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the CA glue just, you know, I don't use it enough to, to really ever go through an entire bottle, and mm -hmm. most of the time it dries out. So these single-use ones, they come with a separate cap that you basically screw on at the time that you're going to use it and it punctures the opening at the top. It's just a little foil cap and then there still is a cap that um, that you can use. Are they acetone based? Um, it's the same it's the same as the other Polyurethane based product. I mean the uh, the CA product. Um, I can't I can't give you the answer in terms of what it's okay. what the composition is here. I bet it is. Yeah. I, I don't know of any, I don't know of a CA glue that isn't. There there is another one I've seen at the home shows. It's supposed to last forever in the bottle and it avoids a lot of the problems that some people have with CA glues, like sticking to fingers and stuff. I think it might be what I don't. It, I want to say water-based, but I'm not sure. Water-based cyanoacrylate. Yeah, it doesn't sound right, but it, it's it's not acetone-based. So I would take out the A. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. It's it's an instant glue that's not acetone-based. Yeah, somebody, somebody last week was talking about like an aircraft adhesive or something as well that sounded pretty scary. Yeah. Basically, uh, Bill had that. Bill was talking about that a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was like you can glue large pieces of metal together, and it's like welding, basically. 
Yeah, I saw that on the, the, the Loctite website as well. That's pretty scary. I'd hate to see what the material safety data sheet looks like for something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, one question I had for you, um, Andy, about the Gorilla uh, PVA glue. Uh -huh. What color is it when it cures? Um, it, it dries white. Okay. Um, you know, there's, you know, I've, I've kind of looked at the polyurethane, or the, uh, the Gorilla PVA, and then kind of compared that with um, some of the other type bond products. They all have slightly different tints. Um, we have tweaked the tint of the um, PVA wood glue formula a little bit over the last few years, um, just to give it a good optimal kind of um, cured color. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, darker woods, like really dark woods, you may have a greater chance of seeing something versus the lighter woods. Mm -hmm. But it definitely doesn't have that yellow strip that appears, I think, versus some of the other uh, PVAs that are out there, when, especially if you're doing like pine or maple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Scott Meek is asking if there's a trick to keep CA glue from drying out. Do you have any tricks for that, Andy? Um, clean the, you know, clean the cap really well when it's Keep done. Keep it clean, yeah. Um, you know, make sure that the, the cap and the, the applicator itself are, are, are clear as much as possible. Um, you know, squeeze a little bit of the air out of it as well. If you can, all of the bottles are usually a little, a little, a little denser um, just so that there isn't any kind of air that's activating the drying process as well. Mm -hmm. That usually helps. Okay. I'm looking and at the MSDS for the Gorilla CA glue, but it's basically saying it's a um, full ethyl cyanoacrylate. It's not really saying anything about acetone. Okay. I don't. I don't know enough about chemistry to read read this any better. Yeah, I, I, that's definitely one that I would have to defer to some of the. Um, uh, some of the R&D experts on the team. Kind of going through and catching up here and seeing if there's other questions yeah. right here. Vent yeah. laminations. Uh, one thing I have heard of people doing to preserve the life of their CA glues is putting it in the refrigerator. Um, I spoke to the folks at Satellite City who make the hot stuff line of glues, and they don't recommend that because it can cause moisture to condense in there, and that'll actually accelerate the curing of the glue. Yeah, Fritz Rare Repair says they need to invent a new container. CA in the tube is a mess. And yeah, I yeah I agree with that. Yeah, we um, I think it was maybe last week or a couple of weeks ago. Um, a lot of us were talking about the, you know, just the fact that glue in a plastic bottle, it's just you're always going to have some sort of, you know, bonding or clumping or clogging one way or the other. That's kind of always the big challenge. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about the, uh, the Heinz ketchup uh, demo that I think a couple of guys in California gave where it's like a, a plastic bottle liner that it's like sprayed onto the inside of a bottle and the ketchup kind of just flows out in a very odd, viscous way. It doesn't stick to the bottle at all and it completely empties it out and leaves no residue behind. Now, I don't know how that would work with a glue product, but I'm willing to bet it would be interesting to try it out. Hmm. Well, it sounds like a Teflon coating or something like that. I'm going to see if I can find the video of that and post it. Yeah. Matt, do you have a link to the two-part CA glues? I haven't actually heard of that before. <clears throat> Sorry, it's the one that, where you spray an accelerator. Oh, okay, right. Now, that's not... Okay, is that really a two... Now not the, really a two-part. It's no, just, okay. I just misspoke. Okay. Can you find the last one? That's interesting. Okay. Here it is. Um, the uh, the product is Liquid Glide. Liquid Glide. Yeah. Here. 
I'm posting it now. It's a pretty trippy video. Okay. But I gotta imagine you probably had some same some similar results as what you see with the ketchup there. Mm -hmm. um, where did you post the link? Uh, oh, I update. Here we go. It's updating now. Okay. On, okay. on the tweet chat. Liquid light. Has it shown up? Yep. Yeah, it's here. Okay. All right. Okay. So. Wow. In terms yeah, of that, if that could keep a glue bottle clean, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, because the cap. I mean, the the cap is always a challenge, and you know, obviously, always looking at ways to kind of improve the cap. The um, uh, we we've, we've added on the smaller bottle of the uh, polyurethane product. We've added uh, a special screw cap that has a metal pin that kind of goes into the opening itself that's inside the cap, and that, again, prevents air and moisture from getting into the bottle, which is always kind of the biggest enemy of, of polyurethane glue. In terms of other, in terms of other products and things that we've been developing right now, obviously, you know, a lot of the things that have um, that we've rolled out also kind of go beyond glues. Um, the tape, which is part of the um, uh, part of the prize pack tonight, one of the bigger tapes that we have is our Gorilla Tape. This is the extra wide roll. It's a three inch uh, yeah. wide roll of tape. Um, this stuff is is killer strong, killer tough. Um, yeah. So this is uh, this is good if you need to like tape up a, a broken car window or mm -hmm. um, or tow anything. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot stronger and it, it does really well on like um, rough surfaces, um, uneven surfaces, things like that. Much stronger sheer strength than, um, than regular duct tape for sure. And then uh, we've got the same version which is popular uh, with hunters which is the camo tape which is kind of a forest camouflage pattern we need some chameleon tape. Some what tape? Chameleon. It blends into the surface. <laughs> nice. I saw um, they've got bandages, bandages that do that. Clear, clear duct tape. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that works too. Um, what about painter's tape? I use a lot of painter's tape when doing a glue up, um, and I've kind of kind of gone away from the 3M tape to the frog tape. That's the green stuff? Yeah. Yeah, um, it, it's come up. Um, it's certainly a, a, a more popular general market product that's out there. Um, you know, the, the, the deal with painter's tape is it's, you know, obviously it needs to peel off really well, but have a good bond to the surface so that the, the paint doesn't, or the adhesive or whatever you're kind of protecting doesn't kind of creep under the surface of the tape itself. Um, I don't know of anything planned right now, but yeah, that's another that's another great idea to extend the tape the tape category for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, David Barden in on Twitter had a question: um, Can you slow the set time of PVA by chilling or warming the glue? Uh, certainly wouldn't recommend uh, warming or chilling it uh, too much. It certainly has a, a narrower threshold of, of heat toler tolerances versus the polyurethane product. I think um, he heating it will cure faster, won't it? Heating it, yeah, it'll cure it faster. He wants to slow it. Slow it down, so. If you want to slow the cure of, of PVA glue, um, you know, yeah. you, you can thin it a little bit and that'll, that'll slow it a tiny bit. But again, it, you know, it, it's not going to be, it's not going to be like a, a, a slow cure time or set time like you get with like a slow set epoxy or something like that. Right. And there is a product that Tight Bond makes called Tight Bond Extend too, which does have a longer open time. So different, maybe just choose a different glue. Yeah. Yeah, it's certainly not to say that you know every product that we have is right for every application. You know, I. 
you got to pick the right product for the right application. You know, I've used plenty of, uh, you know, System 3 epoxy for, you know, big chair assemblies where I had, you know, 50 mortise and tenons that all needed to be kind of assembled and clamped at one time. There's no way I could have done that with the, you know, I needed, I needed a full hour of open time <laughs> to get everything aligned. There's a type bond glue for trim, a type bond glue for trim that is um, thicker and sets up pretty quick. Um, so it's gap filling. Um, so I picture the guys who use the white pre-primed MDF crown molding using a lot of that stuff. Yeah, that would be, you know, like when they basically use it to kind of hold it in place. And on their crappy miters, <clears throat> right, when they're going to, you know, because they're, they're, they want something that's gap filling. They want something they can run their finger on and push it in there to make it look like they've got a good miter. It kind of matches when it dries, that pre-primed white um, MDF trim that you get at the big box store. So, yeah. Um, and it, and it's, it gets pretty tacky pretty quick. So. Now, the construction adhesive, did people use construction adhesives the same way? Um, I've seen them use, <clears throat> I've seen trim guys putting up that white trim use the, um, you know, like a brad nailer to secure it to the wall, and then in the in the corners, they'll goop in that Alex Plus caulk mm -hmm. into those corners to fill those up, and uh, a wet finger to basically sculpt the caulk to make the miters look great. And that stuff dries pretty quick and um, is sandable and paintable. So, <clears throat> yeah, you had, didn't you submit uh, earlier something about like a wood filler or a wood putty? Yeah, so I there's two wood fillers I like. I like the one, the Timbermate, the, the um, water-based one. But apparently there's one made that's very similar to Timbermate here in Redmond in my hometown. I've never been able to actually find it. Um, in your hometown? Hmm? The stuff that's made in your hometown, you haven't been able to I've find it? I've never been able to find it. Apparently it's, it's made here. Um <laughs> But it's just it's water-based, and so the great part is if it dries out, you just literally every time I open the jar and use a little bit, I just drip a couple drips of water in there, mm -hmm. and the next time I open it, it's 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 perfect. And if I don't do that, yeah, and if I don't do that, it hardens up a little bit, but it just get it wet and it re-softens. It's great stuff. <laughs> okay, so we've got a. Uh Three minutes left before six o'clock. There. Does anybody have any more questions? I think we should wrap it up and talk about next week. Right, next week. So, um, just a reminder before we go into next week, guys. If, if anyone does want to, uh, you know, give it a shot for one of those prize packs, they can uh, they can go to my site, brownellfurniture.com and uh, just go ahead and post um, any ideas you have on, under those three categories, either under new product ideas, best tough story, uh, or fill in the blank. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at those uh, by the end of the week, and we'll review them and pass along a uh, prize pack to the top three. Cool. I'm so gonna by the end of the week, when's the, when's the deadline? By the end of the week, yep, Friday. Friday, okay, by end of Friday. No, oops, got the wood chat today. Okay, so Matt, what's happening next week? So next week, uh, Mark Spagnolo is going to join us. Um, we're going to start an hour late. He's the Wood Whisperer, of course, and runs the Wood Whisperer Guild. Uh, we're going to start an hour late so he can get uh, Mateo to bed. Um, so it'll be 7 to 8 o'clock on the Pacific Coast and 10 to 11 o'clock, a little bit later start time on the East Coast. Um, and uh, remember to, uh, on the Google Plus page, um, there's always an event reminder. So if you circle Google, circle, circle Woodchat on Google Plus, you'll get the event reminders. Um, pretty soon here, the video will be posted to YouTube, and we'll have the um, tweet chat transcript as closed captions on the video. So when you watch the YouTube video, if you click the little red CC button that's down in the corner, you'll see the uh, the chat 
from everybody that was in the text chat room uh, on the bottom of the screen. Um, it's not that easy to read right now because Google doesn't do it, YouTube doesn't do a good job with the text overlay. Um, but if you want to get caught up on uh, caught up on these chats on the road, it's a good option for you. So, so I think that's it. Cool. Okay. All right. And thanks everybody for joining. And don't forget to uh, um, don't forget to enter into the context to win a, Goo a Gorilla Glue prize pack. The uh, right. link is going to be in the transcript. Thanks everyone. Have, Have a good night. Fun, Sandy. Good night. See you guys later. <laughs>